uh, Lord Lieutenant, members of the Pony staff and attendees. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk here today. The road of life takes many twists and turns and little do we know what life experiences lie ahead of us when we wake up each morning. Little did I know uh, when uh, 30 years ago this year I had heard about a character who was a distant relation to me and uh, he was a resident in Leopardstown Park Hospital in Dublin. Uh, he'd been in the Battle of the Somme and having been induced to history uh, courtesy of Easton Shop in Dublin and Lady Bird Histories, I said I'd go out and meet this guy and little did I know the consequences of meeting him. You wake up in the morning, you don't feel well, oh, I won't go into work today. Nothing compared to what uh, Sammy uh, experienced. There are those who say that those who lost their lives in the battlefield got away easy and those that they came home. Sammy was an interesting character. He uh, served with the Irish Guards, he came home, he worked in the powerhouse for Uncle Arthur, which is the nickname for Arthur Guinness, and he was a lovely, lovely man. Excuse us. Now, 1988 was also a very special year because this is a photograph taken in June of 1988 and it's the last known visit of World War I veterans to the Memorial Gardens in Island Bridge. This is my friend Sammy here, the man in charge of Leopardstown Park Hospital and this is a gentleman called uh, Jack Campbell. He was, went out in August of 1914 but he did something rather special, because on the battlefield he rescued a Scottish soldier <coughs> called Fergus Bowes Lyon. <laughs> and that uh, was the brother of the future uh, Queen Mother, and the, he regularly used to get correspondence. When Her Majesty came to the Republic of Ireland in May uh, 2011, uh, there were some unique opportunities, and as she correctly said in her wonderful speech in Dublin Castle, with hindsight things could have been done differently. And by Joe, uh, uh, to use a Ronaldinho of it, she'd done a blinder in Dublin Castle. And her words, if we look at the symbolism, that's taken in Dublin Castle. And here's a very, this is taken in the Taoiseach's office and we have a picture of Michael Collins. Very symbolic. So if any of you are ever involved in planning ceremonial events, photography is so important. Here we have the memorial to the Easter Rising. This is a standard side shot, but RTE television on the day placed a camera in the memorial to get Her Majesty and President McAleese head on. So it's important that when we create these memories, we see how much longevity. Memories take many forms and stained glass windows are one way of looking how events can be <coughs> commemorated. Other, others are the cross and crosses have played a very important part of the history of the Emerald Isle. Here we have a beautiful stained glass window for, uh, to the Royal Irish Rangers in St. Anne's Cathedral <coughs> of Belfast and I was updating my pictures on that for a possible programme for the conclusion of the war uh, at the end in November of this year. Now, this is a photograph taken in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin on the actual 100th anniversary of the Easter Rising. And I'm showing it at this stage because you have the two Archbishops of Armagh together. There were only two of us photographing in the cathedral that day. And that was taken with 100 to 400 lens from the back of the cathedral. And I think it's a very Point for. It shows how much remembrance has come on the island of Ireland. I've had the pleasure for more years than I care to remember working with the Royal British Legion uh, uh, on the island. And Armagh has become a great centre of ceremonial parades. But in Armagh, they like parades. So in order to do it properly, my colleague Oliver Green from Enniskillen uh, stood at the Mall in Armagh and I trucked along the parade. And the photograph up on the top left hand corner 
uh, was taken with a 16 to 35 wide angle lens placed on the ground to get the panoramics. Uh, when you're doing events, it's very important that you get a group shot. This was done a little bit at the last moment, but it's still got the, the atmosphere of it. Uh, we have the standard bearers, or some people would call it flag bearers, but, that, but to get the panoramics. And here you will see uh, representatives of former, uh, former and present British Red, but you'll also see representatives of the Irish Army and the Organisation of National Ex-Servicemen. Uh, this is our ma uh, for the Mazines 100, and a good photographer likes to get the whole atmosphere of the, the social expressions of it. And anybody that has been unfortunate enough to sign up to my emails know that I love dogs, <laughs> and I, that, that's a lovely social picture. But also, we have the two uh, archbishop, archbishops, or ma. And with the background of the Ginchy Cross. The Ginchy Cross was back, brought back by General William Bernard Hickey, who founded the Royal British Legion in the Republic of Ireland. And it's in Island Bridge. It's very symbolic. I think here we see a lovely picture of an ex serviceman paying reverence to fallen colleagues. Uh, my colleague Oliver Breen covered uh, the square in Armagh. And uh, rarely do photographers get into a picture, but because we've built up such a rapport with various dignities around, oh, they just can't say no. And, and uh, Arlene uh, says, uh, oh, this is Patrick, my Dublin photographer. Uh, the psalm means many things to many people, and I was privileged to be asked to record the Psalm 100 service, which was very, very symbolic. And the beauty about phot photographing in St. Anne's and Belfast is it is bright. Golden rules uh, in ceremonial photography in churches, no flash. But in St. Anne's, it's bright. <coughs> Pictures like this, you have to get done early when uh, the service. And, and we have the two main organisers. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson and Kingsley Donaldson. And I particularly like the picture up on the top left because it's uh, paying homage to those uh, people from Ulster who got the Victoria Cross uh, at the Battle of the Somme. Here, uh, you have to capture the whole uh, service and we have the present uh, at the wreaths. Uh, there's a lot of people that go into making a, ser a, co a commemoration service work. We have musicians. Here we have the regimental band, we have uh, the dignitaries laying the rings, and we have up here how a congregation reacts to it. The gentleman uh, in, up in the top left is a very good friend of mine, the Reverend uh, Mervyn Gibson, and it's a pleasure to work with. Here we have pictures taken in Saint uh, at City Hall in Belfast. What a difference a year can make! Sunshine, rain. I nearly thought that uh, if they had had shampoo, they could have done the jean singing in the rain. But that's it. Also, that here this presents little problems, uh, which Photoshop can correct because normally when you're doing a wreath, you should hold it around the opposite way. But Photoshop can come in very useful. Uh, here, sorry, just go. here it's it's important if you look at this photograph here, you get the reflection <coughs> shot of people in the instruments. And if those pictures come off, they are extremely good. 1966 means many things to many people. And it's a very pivotal point to look at the difference in commemoration between uh, the North of Ireland and the South of Ireland. But there was something very special happened in the King's Inn uh, Training School for Barristers in February of 1966, when the then Taoiseach made a reference to uh, commemorating those who uh, uh, joined the crown, forces of the Crown. Now, the quote concerned this part here is often quoted, and it has been copied and pasted by celebrity uh, academics. I only wish people would actually go back to the original file and look at the speech, because it is a speech on par with Lincoln's speech at Gettysburg. Here, these pictures here are, are of the actual Easter Rising itself, 
and they were taken from a wonderful publication which a lot of people don't know about. It's the Capuchin Annual. The Capuchin Annual, by the Capuchin Order, wonderful standard of writing, virtual wit witness statements to history, published between 1971 and 1977. Now, the King's Inn in 2016 decided to have 100 years since the Easter Rising. They had the Mass in 1966, but they didn't have the then Taoiseach. But these were the people, this was the, the auditor, and this photograph, little did I know how poignant this photograph, because it was the last public outing of this gentleman, Justice uh, Adrian Hardyman. And it was the, his last photograph taken in public. And there's been a few occasions where I've been the only photographer there. But the type of photography I do, I do not syndicate. I do not do uh, social media because uh, I built up trust with people. And that is the art to a good photographer that you build up trust with people. The other side of 1916 was the rising. And my good friend Father Ivan Tonge in Ringsend Church asked me to record it because that was the nearest church to Boland's Mills and these, these were people whose relatives had partaken in the rising. Again, it's always nice to get a nice group shot and when you're doing people with medals, uh, you do a full head to toe and then you do a 45 degree side shot and those are run a standard one. It is great to see that the uh, Irish army uh, goes out of its way to participate in all types of commemoration ceremonies. I think that's a positive thing to note that one has moved on. Now, the hundred, the actual date of the start of the Easter Rising, uh, uh, there was a ceremony held outside the gates of Dublin Castle. Uh, this ceremony was to commemorate the first DNP man. Uh, shot. He was guarding the gates of Dublin Castle. Fine, the RIC DMP Association organised it. Uh, I turned up. Uh, you had the British ambassador, you had the journalist Kevin Myers, etc. But at the very end of the service, something very, very unique happened. This little lady with the blonde hair turned up and she came along, put a wreath on, and people were saying, Why is she there? She was the distant relative of the man who shot the DMP. Mm -hmm. So that shows you how much commemoration has moved on. There has been wonderful behind the scenes activity, uh, bridge building, and what I say to people, there's a unique opportunity this year to reach out to people and say, would you like to come along? The shared, the shared experience of commemoration. Now, uh, this, these were pictures taken uh, at the 100th anniversary of the Easter Rising. And I had been in the same position for the 90th. And I got wonderful photographs. Uh, I was on duty at half seven on the mo in the morning on O'Connell Bridge just to get wide angle shot. Now, when we think of the First World War, we think of the Easter Rising, you think of soldiers. But one of the sad things is people don't think of nurses and medical support personnel. There were far more women involved in the provision of nursing services in the Great War than the Easter. I'm not doubting that people did important career work during the Easter Egg, but fact, sorry, thousands of women. But there is a major uh, thing I'm, uh, happening to commemorate Irish women uh, and the provision of nursing services in the Great War. Sometimes it is rather difficult to get to certain places. So I was down here on the bridge, but this photograph was lifted off a giant video screen. Here uh, we have our... Now, I had, at the end of the day, I picked out 10 pictures uh, as a sample of the day. I sent them around. Within 15 minutes, uh, <coughs> She who must be obeyed, Patricia, the better half, got a phone call. Do you realise who was in the picture? That is her nephew. <laughs> we, 
we, I took a gamble. I could have been on the other side or I was on the island in the middle of O'Connell Bridge, so I got in. The problems of injured ex-servicemen have not gone away. Uh, the psychological difficulties which the veterans of the First World War face are important, and that is why it is extremely important to support the various ex-service uh, ch charities that are still continuing. Here we have last year's uh, Easter parade. Now because of the Lewis works, uh, they were marching on the side of Cleary's, and the military police asked me to take uh, a photograph and this was before the president came and this was before he got the job as Taoiseach and you'd want when the two of them the, the, the giant yell went up so it's capturing the social interaction which happens at ceremonies one of the major centres of commemoration in Dublin is Glasnevin Cemetery some people have nicknamed it the city of the dead and this was a, a very I keep using the word coining. This was a photograph taken at the World War I Memorial. But it's a silhouette of, uh, these are Irish soldiers, and this is a late friend of mine, Noel Cullen, who used to carry the standard. He has since gone upstairs, but it's, uh, photographs like that do not come around very often, and when they do, you know it's a special photograph. Here, we have photographs taken in Glasnevin Cemetery, with uh, an oak drawn, uh, Michael G. Higgins. So you have to think of the certain iconic monuments to get in at ceremonies. Simple wide angle lens, portrait, you get the tower, you get the president. But here we have a very special occasion when the cross of sacrifice was unveiled in Glasnevin Cemetery and when His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent came along. And you had uh, representatives of the Royal Irish Regiment. When you're looking at ceremonies, I say to organisers, please put a branding on your lectern so that when you're, get, when you're, when you're getting the photograph, there. But that, that was a, a special occasion. Here we have uh, the Easter Rising ceremony and there is a, a debate as to who should have been included on the memorial wall. The inclusive nature of commemoration meant that civilians and military personnel are include everybody. And it makes, and I was at the very edge of the press pit and I, I got this reflective pose of Michael D. Higgins. Now the social photographs tell a lot about events. And I love this photograph. Because uh, it's a photograph of one of the main organizers in the department of the Taoiseach before the ceremony started. And those of you that can remember an old Guinness ad where the guy was looking, I, I think I'm really proud of that photograph. Here we have, again, ceremonies held in Glasnevin where the Royal British Legion and the Republic of Ireland and Irish men who joined the French Foreign Legion. Joined. This is a wonderful uh, photograph taken of the daughter of James Duffy, who was a Royal and a Skilling Fusilier and got the Victoria Cross. And in 1966, when Her Majesty the Queen came to, uh, to Stormont, he was photographed with her. Here we have the chapel uh, in Glasnevin. Now, it's, an, it's a logistical issue, but I'm making the comment that the organisers, when you're planning an event, Think of the photo angle, because you cannot uh, see the priest there. Here, this is a, a great example of how commemoration on the island of Ireland has changed. Now, I, as a historian come for talk, I always like to see, does something special arise? And these two gentlemen turned up in Glasnevin one day. And, you know, but particularly this man here. Now, uh, 20, 30 years ago, it would be unheard of of him or the organisation that he represents to turn up at a commemoration ceremony for the First World War. He was the president of the Gaelic Athletic Association. It shows you how much has changed. And uh, what came out of that is that the Royal British Legion and the Republic of Ireland issued an invitation to him to come to the annual remembrance service in St. Patrick. I'd love to come. 
and he was uh, nervous and getting anxious and what am I to do and uh, the car park got over him. But this is also, these two photographs show again how much commemoration has changed. This is Dougie Gray, the Grand Master of the Lodge of Freemasons. And this is Mr. Ian Robinson, who's chairman of the Irish Guards Regimental Association. So, a little word, uh, it's a very important year, and it shows you, if you reach out to people, what can happen as a result. Some people get excited about Niall Horan playing in the SSE arena in Belfast last night. Some people get excited about Man U playing Man City. I get excited about the first Saturday in July every year because uh, myself, along with my two colleagues, Oliver Breen from Enniskillen and Danny Tiernan from Boyle and Roscommon, this is our big day out. It's a huge logistical operation to record it properly. On average, uh, at a ceremony for Island Bridge, we take in excess of 2,000 photographs. There's three of us, we do it from different angles. Uh, a lost treasure for many years, but it's great to see that it has matured. And to see Island Bridge go up about 9 o'clock in the morning and you see it beautifully. The Royal British Legion is active in the Republic of Ireland. In the 1930s, it had a, uh, up to 130 branches, ecumenical and unisex. Branches were based on occupations, a location of... Uh, soldiers, cottages, etc. And I think this took a little bit of photoshopping together, but I think on the commemorative program for the ending of the war this November, I think that collage, uh, it, it's a poignant one. Now these, these are photographs that I took in Island Bridge. This symbolises the contribution of uh, the Royal British Legion uh, ladies section in the power of remembrance and you cannot function as a ceremonial photographer unless you have the help of this man. He is the, the master of ceremonies. He puts people. And, uh, you know, when you're trying to do a large group photograph, it's rather reminiscent of school photography and trying to get kids into the right place. In the digital age that we live, taking photographs is easy. Taking a good photograph is a bit of luck. Taking a great photograph is a privilege and it doesn't happen very often. The Irish Guards Regiment were doing a charity walk in Island Bridge. I was up there. I was over here taking photographs and I turned around and I saw this. And the reason why this is so special is because the gentleman in question was serving with the Irish Guards he was on the beach at Anzio in 1944. That's a photograph. And if I was picking out my top ten, that would be definitely in it. Now here we have a photograph taken in Island Bridge uh, two years ago. Uh, now this was taken, if you know Island Bridge, it's taken from the base of the cross. You can only do that photograph towards the end of the ceremony. Uh, for logistical, but I wanted to do it for years. I, I started to do. There are people in this row along here that 10, 15 years ago would not be seen at a commemoration ceremony for the First World War. And the reason why uh, uh, the, the two uh, people concerned, and you can see, I have a good idea who they are. The reason why they came, because there was wonderful behind the scenes diplomacy and talking but, uh, by various people. And there's one person in the audience here today who I will not mention, but I'd just like to say thank you very much for your efforts for making that uh, uh, possible. Here we have another photograph, and this is a must-do photograph by my colleague Oliver Breen. We want to get that every year, where we get the tricolour and the colours of the Royal uh, British Legion. Uh, it tells a lot on how commemoration has moved on. This is another favourite photograph. Uh, I used to do the left-hand side, but I now do the right-hand side, and Oliver. But I would, this was taken 10 years ago. I would love to get the same people back in the same position and to see how people have moved on. 
but I think it, it's a wonderful social photograph. Here we have a photograph of a lady who has done wonderful work uh, to rehabilitate uh, the complex uh, and controversies of history of the Emerald Isle. Here we have a photograph taken in Island Bridge on the 90th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme. And people often ask me, when were the gardens in Island Bridge opened? There has never been an official opening, if, if, to use a phrase, an Irish solution to an Irish problem. But that was a special day when everything uh, came together. Uh, here is the National Day of Commemoration, and here is the 90th anniversary. That photograph was taken because I was embedded in the crowd. Embedded is a photographic term where you're placed in one position and you do not move, but the trade-off is you get very, very good photograph. And this is the same thing here at the National Day of uh, Commemoration in uh, the Royal Hospital in Cumbernian. Such is the change atmosphere towards commemoration that the Royal British Legion Ceremony on the Saturday and the National Day uh, in Kilmainham, uh, people make a weekend of it. I think commemoration is going to face a number of challenges come November this year. And I think it will be interesting to see how commemoration changes. These photographs were taken at 7 o'clock in the morning on the 1st of July 2016. Now, in ceremonial photography, there's certain things you can do during the practice sessions, and you can get pictures and then put them into the running order. Again, you know, Irish uh, army personnel carrying various flags. We have our Piper. Again, the late and much lamented Noel Cullen. Here we have the 2016 ceremony in Island Bridge for the Sun. Because Island Bridge is so spread out, Three, the three of us covered that, and Danny Tiernan was down covering the arrival of the President and uh, the Taoiseach. Here we have other pictures taken from the 100th anniversary, and again it shows you the relationship between the Irish Army and the Royal British Legion. Uh, because of the relationship with the military police, they cordoned me to photograph uh, their personnel at the Ginchy Cross, and we see uh, the girls from Mount Sackville School, which is close to the Phoenix Park. Here we have a situation uh, which was rather interesting. It was to commemorate those members of British Army regiments <coughs> who had lost their lives during Easter week. It was in uh, Black Horse Avenue Cemetery uh, in Dublin, close to the Phoenix Park. Uh, you had the British Ambassador, you had members of the Royal Irish Regiment there, fine. This photograph was taken putting a 16 to 35 lens on the ground to get the panoramics. But that ceremony became a bit notorious because of what happened. Uh, uh, due to um, an organisational issue uh, uh, and the concern of the Canadian ambassador, uh, the uh, situation happened. But uh, it shows you how times have moved on and if you never are able to go to a uh, cemetery in Belgium, Black Horse Avenue in Dublin is a wonderful place to go. Black Horse Avenue is also the centre for the uh, Anzac ceremonies on the 25th of April and uh, a lot of the Australian and New Zealanders uh, go to that. This is a picture that was taken from a flower festival at Christ Church in Bray, County Wicklow. Uh, I walked into the church and I said, OMG. This, was a, this is only a small segment, but it covered the whole width of the church and was a ginormous painting on canvas. And I think it says a lot about commemoration and how times have changed. The main source of study into Ireland's war record is the Irish National War Memorial records. These are the, the eight volume books. Uh, the border was designed by the great Irish stained glass artist Harry Clark, and these are some of the graphics. Statistically off the mark, unreliable. And this is where the figure of 49,400 occurs. My highly esteemed uh, colleague Oliver Breen is responsible for looking after the organisational issues 
of remembrance ceremonies in Enniskillen, and he has built up a wonderful rapport uh, with uh, the serving Taoiseach, be it the present Leo Varadkar or the previous incumbent Enda Kenny. And it's through that that you get wonderful access to Madrid. These are pictures which Oliver took in the Church of Ireland and then nobody else has them. And you get that because you build up trust, you build up rapport, and that is the whole key. And I'm hoping uh, that the entire collection will be deposited uh, in the public record office. Last year our picture count was 7,200 pictures, and I hope to Stephen that it won't burn up your drives too much. Here, we, Oliver has done Trojan work to remember people in Enniskillen, and the, this is when we, uh, it was unveiled, the memorial to the Victoria Cross holders from uh, Fermanagh. Again, because you built up a rapport uh, with Arlene uh, Foster and others, you get to photograph the meeting. Now, commemoration has not been limited to Enniskillen or Belfast. There are towns throughout the island of Ireland and counties which are at last bringing home uh, the memory. This is County Cavan. My father is from County Cavan, and I believe we have another distinguished uh, 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 person from County Cavan. Uh, but this, the, the, the memorial in Cavan is interesting because it's been moved twice. Once. Uh, twice in this is the parade from the centre of Capitan out to its original uh, crossing. And it was at the Y in the road, I think the Virginia road or something. But this was the original one. Now, a prop, they have revised their memorial because in the, in the construction of the original listing, there were people who shouldn't have been on it because they were friends of a friend. And they have revamped uh, the, the listing and that is uh, the memorial is being rededicated uh, this November. They have done something which is the envy of a lot of people, and I was privileged to deliver the opening night lecture. They reenacted the trenches, and on the opening night, approximately 300 people walked with candles through the trenches, and it was very, very uh, humbling. So that is County Cavan. But here we have a rural churchyard in County Westmead to remember uh, a gentleman called Boyd Rochford who survived the war and became uh, uh, a horse uh, trainer. For many years uh, the graveyard had been abandoned and the local community along with the Midlands and Kildare branch of the Royal Bush Legion reinvigorated. I love the photograph of an Irish country churchyard with the trees and the colours. And again, uh, I was covering from here and my colleague Danny Tiernan was from the other side, so we were able uh, to cover it in, in, at all angles. Here is another ceremony. Uh, uh, that, this was the reception for Boyd Rochford. And the reception took place in the house which is now a luxury hotel. And I walked in to the, the place and I met the owner. I said, hello, I'm Patrick. And I said, there's a problem. I said, Patrick, what's the problem? Here was a large, long table. I said, if you want to get the picture, have to move the table. So we moved the table. And if you look at that picture, what it tells, an Irish country house, stairs, group. So when you're planning ceremonies, it's essential that there is, you have to get a, a group photo. Here we have in a Catholic church in County Westmead to remember a chaplain who had served in the First and the Second World War. Now, uh, the top photograph placed on the ground, wide angle lens, fine. But this there's a bit of a story behind this photograph for two reasons. First, I've been photographing Easter Sunday ceremonies, and you saw the picture of the Peter Cleo Wagner. Fine. The ceremony had ended, and I thought I'd done all the pictures, and I was on my way home, and due to 
a vision problem, which wasn't alcoholically induced. <laughs> uh, I didn't see a Lewis protection barrier. Yeah, it happened. Uh, I went over it. I was more concerned about the cameras than breaking my arm. Of course, you have the cynic who say, Patrick, you injured yourself outside the GPO. Are you going to claim to the 1916 rising casualties? But, that's but I had to hold the camera in the air with my broken arm. Cat Catholic Church, County Westmead, all the clergymen. That shows you how times have moved on. Here we have the same ceremony, but we have uh, a representative uh, of the British Embassy in full dress uniform. We have the Irish Army giving support. Who would have thought in the Catholic Church you'd see something like that? It shows you how times have moved on. This is uh, a photograph, photographs taken to connection with Emerson, uh, who got the VC. He was a Royal Enniskillen, and this was taken in the Church of Ireland in Cullen. And because it's what's called a tea bar church, Oliver was based up the top of the church and I stood down the back. And start, these are important photographs, but those can be generally done at the start of ceremonies. Uh, memory does cause difficulties in the island brand. And there's one particular event to do with the Irish army, which was hushed up for a long, long time, but recently has been the subject of a wonderful film uh, called The Siege of Jadaville. And this, Danny took these pictures in at loan, and these were all the survivors of Jadaville. So, because we built up a rapport, and have any of you seen The Siege of Jadaville? Okay, well, there's a scene in it where there's an Irish army personnel driving on his own up to the house and knocking at the door for Conor Cruz O'Brien to do something. That man who drove that jeep was my friend Danny Tainan, the photographer's father. So it shows you how times have come in. Here we have another ceremony uh, to do with uh, uh, the boy Rochford, but uh, uh, this was actually taken in the Catholic Church, but aware of sensitivities when a religious service has been held, T-Bar Church, uh, Oliver was here, uh, Danny was here and I, I floated around. But you see, all, you would have never seen that 10, 15 years ago, all those standards in a, in a Catholic church. Here we have a, ser a wonderful community-led service held in Slane to remember the poet Francis Ledridge. So when you're thinking about memory, you think of soldiers, but think of the support mechanisms to memory. And poetry is one of them. And it was a privilege to photograph that. The National Day of Commemoration of the Royal Hospital in Kilmainham uh, is a wonderful ceremony. It brings all uh, the traditions and complexities of memory on the island of Ireland. And because of our unique uh, positions, we get these up close photographs. And those are the pictures that last the test. We rarely get together, but that's the three of us together. And uh, the three amigos, or uh, there have been other... Uh, uh, names added to the tree, but we've gained unique access. Now, memory has come, I keep saying it, a long, long way. And if you look at the uh, pictures there, you will see uh, some interesting personnel. Uh, there's one particular picture, uh, and that shows you how much uh, commemoration has come on. And I think in the year that's in it, if you are involved with planning any ceremony, I would suggest to extend an invitation to people. I think there's a lot of goodwill out there, and it's true goodwill that a lot of these pictures have come about. <coughs> yeah. Uh, this was an interesting... <laughs> uh, okay, where do I start? The Lord Mayor said, Patrick, I want you to take a photograph. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll do the photograph for you. So uh, I thought I got the photograph. I got down, line it up, fine. And this is where the Lord Mayor. But 
I went back to the Lord and I said, Lord Mayor, I'm not too sure I've got the photograph. And he used an expletive word. And I said, I have a solution, Lord Mayor. He said, what? Oh, what do you want to do? He said, would you go over and ask his Royal Highness, could we do a retake? And this thing would only happen in Ireland. But it worked. I did it. Now, people, I had my arm in a cast. And uh, my good friend Stephen Humphreys from the Sunday Independent, uh, I said, Stephen, you've got to get me. I get so much street credibility from being photographed. So people often ask me, well, what did your Royal Highness say to you, Patrick? And I, I, this is meant to happen. And your Royal Highness, I would like you to autograph the cast on my arm. And she's meant to have said to me, Patrick, I need to carry a pen or money. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is myself photographed with a photographic legend, Arthur Edwards. Arthur took the famous photograph of uh, Princess Diana holding the children's. That is one of the great photographs of all time. And how I got an intro to him was, when I was getting my arm and plaster checked out in the Black Rock Clinic, I got talking to this woman, and she said, oh, my sister is married to Arthur. She so you never know, on the island of Ireland, where you can meet people. Okay, uh, this is something special. Uh, I was asked by the Irish Guards Regiment to photograph Truth in the Colour this year. And uh, I went over and back in the day, and it was the hottest day in London. And I had my full kit. I did all these pictures. Uh, and uh, fine. And then, if Her Majesty heard what I did with the picture afterwards, she said, Patrick, I'm going to put you in the tower. Because I, I, with apologies to His Royal Highness, uh, uh, I had to him allegedly saying, Is there any of my Irish friends that could send me a Guinness? It's very thirsty here. But it, it was a great privilege to, vote, to get the dust and the atmosphere. And occasions like that don't happen very often. Uh, again, the pictures say it all. Uh, heat. And photographing in heat does cause uh, uh, certain problems. Uh, we're now getting towards the end of a conversation which I hope you found uh, in, in enlightening. I think it's fair to say that because of the changed attitude towards commemoration, uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, bridge building. Uh, uh, memorials are being put up uh, throughout the length and breadth of the enemy dial. And I think it's fair to say that those men from the glens of Antrim, or the Ring of Kerry, or the Sodlands in Wexford, or the hills in Mayo, in what were formerly the muddy fields of Flanders, or the killy cliffs of the Dardanelles, because of your attendance today, and the wonderful work being done by two people, uh, loads of groups, but I'd like to single out two particular uh, groups relevant to, to, to Belfast. One is the 6th Battalion of the Connacht Rangers Study Group on the, on the Falls Road, uh, that has done great work with Tom Hartley, and there's a, a gentleman in the audience uh, who uh, I've worked with for many years, and he's done Trojan work on the Presbyterian War Record, which is a wonderful social document, and that is Edward Connolly. And thank you very much to those doing the deed. A hundred years, a lot of things have changed. And I think what I'm going to say is not disrespectful, but there comes a time when we have to move on. And I think this year is a wonderful opportunity to bring remembrance into the 21st century. And Oliver was in, uh, underneath the Menning Gate last year. This picture doesn't need much words. Irish Army, Royal Irish Regiment, I, they're from a uh, school somewhere in uh, Northern Ireland, and that is a powerful picture. Uh, <laughs> um, saying thank you is a hard word. I feel in many ways like those people who are fortunate to get an Oscar 
and uh, the mother, the cat, the dog, everything. But each person uh, in this photograph has uh, made a copy. We've had Oliver, Danny, and myself have had an opportunity to work with uh, great people. Uh, we will go to any length or any height to get a picture, but getting a good picture is hard work. It does not happen overnight. Now, you're probably saying, what are these two slides here for? In 1955, there was a young lad, and he had a dilemma. And I suppose it faces many Irish people in the wider context of now. What am I going to do for me, mother? So this young lad was out driving his truck in Toledo in Mississippi, and he wanted to do something for his mother. So he got this idea. Ah, I record a wee tune for her. So, fine. And he goes into a place called Sun Recording Studios. And the fella who opened the door was a man called Sam Phillips. Um, and uh, the man was inside, Elvis Aaron Press, says, I want to record a song for my mama. Um, he said, fine. And Sam Phillips asked Elvis Aaron Presley, well, sir, who you like? And he said, I'm not like Carl Perkins. I'm not like Jerry Lee Lewis or Johnny Cash. Uh, my name uh, has been, and I've looked at my birth cert recently, is Patrick Hugh Lynch, and with apologies to that wonderful 1967 classic uh, Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Come Blind. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and thank you very much. Thank you.